What is going on ladies and gentlemen, we're back today with another team play game and today we got a very, very, very special game for yourselves. It's Goon Squad versus the Madden Mastermind crew and uh, this matchup this time is going to be a 3 versus 3. Myself, T-Raw and VG Raven Maniac aka Nick and um, we're taking on Mr. Forrest Gump. Cold World 9 and God's Thumbs. We were initially playing Addy Cards in them, but uh, Addy Cards had ended up having some computer issues and um, you know he wasn't able to connect again or some stuff like that. So nonetheless, this is the matchup right now. Definitely going to be a good game. We have the Patriots. They have the Broncos. And uh, yeah, it's always fun to do some team play to mix it up a little bit. And uh, definitely a few things I want to note about team play is that Defense is so much better, <laughs> mainly because there's two less, you know, computer guys that do silly animations and stuff like that, and there's two other guys you can count on. You can be like, ah, you cover this, you cover that, I'm going to cover this, and you can definitely cover a lot more of the field that way. Um, the pass lead streaks are a lot less effective. The read options, the QB wraps, those, like, weird runs like that are so much less effective as they should be since, you know, if you know it's coming, you should be able to slow it down. But, you know, sometimes since you're only one user and you've got a bunch of guys doing silly things as the computer players, uh, it sometimes allows for plays that you know are coming to still be effective, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll be able to tweak that next year. But, hey, it is what it is right here. Mr. Brady getting strong, getting so strong. Let's go. <laughs> but um, right here, man, we're just going to go ahead and uh, keep making it happen. But... One thing about team play you should also know is that the D-pad is the only way to make um, hot routes and things like that. They do not allow for the use of the quick, uh, quick links, the strategy pad quick links, so you can't use Y to make all your adjustments and stuff like that, which is what a lot of guys are used to, as myself, I'm used to as well. So that is one thing. It is not optional. You don't have the option. You have to use the D-pad. So if you're going to be transitioning over and playing some more team play, definitely learn how to use that D-pad. I mean, it's not too difficult, but you definitely need to know what the different adjustments and stuff are going to be. If you're going to be able to make effective adjustments. Nonetheless, as the video on the defensive adjustments, I talked about that uh, basically. Basically knowing your buttons and stuff like that. So if you're going to be doing that, definitely just make sure you're comfortable there. I've rambled on about this long enough. Let's get back to the game or somewhat back to another topic of team play. Jeez, what am I talking about? I am on a tangent so bad right now. Anyway, let's keep it back going. The other thing I wanted to say about team play is we talked about how the defense is better. We talked about how you got to use the D-pad. But the next thing is the quarterback position. <laughs> Woo-wee. Offense is so much tougher because you first, off you got to worry about three users out there and then you have to worry about what are your two users going to do offensively i mean guys will run some routes and you don't know what they're running you got to kind of guess you got to kind of anticipate and it's really tough and then not to mention the fact that you got to worry about max coverage and then you got to worry about heat too so you got to decide if you're going to be able to have to make a quick pass or a deep one right here they take my cookies though and that's not a good thing but, yeah, you definitely, the quarterback is by far the toughest position in team play. Um, generally, you're going to throw a lot of picks, but as long as you can put up points on the board, uh, you're going to be doing a pretty decent job as long as you're passing the ball. Um, running the ball, you can be effective on the ground as well. But, again, as I said, if there's three users and they actually are keyed in on your run, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to, you know, get super nasty on the ground right here i'm able to save a touchdown with the kicker oh wee if he would have cut out he might have had that and right here mr decker taking off he go oh no he oh my gosh he is gone what the heck was that <laughs> oh those are those plays and man you're just like what are we supposed to do but um you know we got ridley in right now what you're going to see is a key substitution right here. I was asking to get Demps in the entire game for about two games straight. And uh, we finally got Demps in. And, yeah, it's going to make a huge difference for the offense. First play with Demps in. First play. Mr. Gronkowski all the way down the field. Mr. Gronk. Spike. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so the first play we got Demps in. We score a touchdown. And as you've seen in that run earlier, it was actually Demps that I subbed in on that play. So, you know, he was in for a few plays, and we scored a few plays. So definitely, you know, you got to put the best personnel in that's going to lead to your success on both offense and defense, you know, depending on what you're looking for. 
depending on what you're looking to do. Do you want speed? Do you want a possession guy? Whatever it is that your offense is or defense is, whatever is going to be most effective for you, use those guys, you know. Two guys using two different schemes might use the same players, but they might use them at different spots on the field. Or they might use different players. Really depends. Now, this is the second play with Mr. Dempson. And again, we are all the way down the field. Gronk. Spike. <laughs> oh, man. Me and Gronkowski were finding each other all day long. Definitely had a nice connection going there. A lot of dink and dunk passes since they were playing a lot of coverage deeper down the field. So that made it possible. And how to look at home. Next year, all I want to do is see my defensive players actually make a play on the ball when there's a fumble. The offensive players not be psychic. Or if somebody's going to be psychic, make it both sides. Don't make the offense psychic and the defense really, you know, not that bright when it comes to actually trying to recover a fumble because this year it's really bad uh, it's definitely very tough for the defense to get it the only time you usually get it is if you've got a few players in the area and uh they don't have anyone in the area but generally speaking the offense is going to recover a majority of the time not sure why that is the case right here we find gronk in the flat again and ooh, stiff on me sir that man there has three touchdowns on the day great game for mr gronkowski Right here, they go ahead and, oh, man, look at that catch. That was a beautiful thing. You might want to rewind that. Went ahead and <laughs> caught it straight over my mans. But uh, then we start bringing heat after that, and it is getting rough for that quarterback over there. I think Cole was the QB. So it's fourth and 30, and uh, Mr. Mayo gets his eighth sack of the game. So, again, we're bringing a lot of pressure. Right here, we try to thread the needle, and we're unable to do so. And throw the pick. Oh, my gosh. I'm slipping. But now I want to talk about this Super Bowl. What are y'all predictions? What do y'all think is going to happen? I'm hoping the Ravens win. I think they're going to win in a close game. But I can easily see them getting blown out. And I could easily see them, you know, getting a nice double-digit win over the Niners as well. Really depends on how they're going to respond to that read option and that stuff right there. Because I really just don't see... You know, Shotgun. Kaepernick just dotting them up like he's been dotting up a couple of other teams. I really do think it's going to either be a really low-scoring game or it's going to be some back and forth or it's going to be a blowout. One of those three things is going to happen. Those are pretty much the only things that can happen. So, yes, I'm being very, very general here. But as I was saying, man, I just really think that it's going to be a defensive game. The last time they played last year was a very, very defensive game. And I think whatever defense plays better is going to end up winning the game. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's going to be dependent upon the offenses to put the defenses in a good position to win. Because last time they played, I think San Fran uh, ended up winning the game. But, you know, the Ravens just couldn't get first downs. And it really wasn't their defense's fault. It was more or less flack on those guys not being able to at all move the ball down the field. And there's only so many times your defense can stop the opponent from moving half the field and, you know, getting the easy three. Uh, it's going to be a field goal match as well. So, you know, whoever is able to capitalize on their field goal opportunities, I think that's going to be crucial. But, hey, it is what it is. I'm hoping the Ravens win. Uh, get Ed Reed him a Super Bowl. That would be dope. But that's going to wrap this game up. Y'all go ahead and leave y'all, you know, predictions in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and check those out, see what you guys get. Uh, possible score predictions, things like that. We'll see whoever is the closest. If anybody guesses the score exactly, I will give away a free ebook. And uh, till the next time, man. Great game, Goon Squad. Great game, uh, Madam Master, my crew. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Till the next time, this your boy Master Chappie. We go.